<laughs> so what are we doing today? Okay, well, I wanted you to see this real quick. See how I welded a little cap on the end and I made a 90 degree? It makes the exit on this so much better. I noticed that on these impact mills, if you have this tube coming out, I don't care what angle it is, material always seems to bind up, especially if it's got clays or limonite or things like that. What you wanna do is put a 90 on it right there and get it to exit as soon as possible. Drop it straight out. And don't forget your strike plates in there. Yeah, that's very important. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Ooh, I got a real nice surprise for you today. Ain't that right, Mr. Crusher? <laughs> Now, before we get started, I got a whole long list of patron names to read out. So bear with me as I go through the list. Mark Falzone, Sh Shlier Sher, Shlier Sher. Gosh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Dan Fernandez, John Webb, Darwin Gettner, Darwin Gettner, see you out there, Darwin. Daniel Fortune, David Melton, Jake Carlton, Virgil Err. Oh no, I just kidding, it's Virgil, Virgil John Tharp, Frank Wyman, Daniel Vincent, Papa John's. <laughs> no, that's Papa Deer. Hey, oh, hold on a second. Get up there and play me some music in a minute. What's he doing over here anyway? Rick Coyle, Coyle Ho, Coyle Ho. That's that right. Jason Miller, Miller. <laughs> Michael and Brindley Paramore. Matt Oddman. Hey, got that one right, huh, Matt? Warren Drews. Would you hurry up and get me some music? I'm Ooh, on. he's always messing around. Derek. Yarborough Walker the third. Ooh, that's a mouthful. L O L, whatever. <laughs> Justin Guilarte, Pazzy, Tracy, Cleveland, Larry Gillard, Larry Gillard, Ryan Brazil, Franklin Christanstek. Gosh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And Trevor Thompson. <laughs> yeah! Start playing me some music over there, son! I'm gonna give you a big cowboy yeehaw and shout out for helping us keep the dream alive, because we couldn't do it without you. Ain't that right? That's right! <laughs> so you ready? Here we go! Ah. Woo! I tell you what, I love doing that. I don't think my neighbors Ooh, yeah, like that. <laughs> so let's get on with the business of hand, shall we? You, you get back to work. I had a lot of people write in and say, Jeff, when you're processing all that nasty caliche with the clays in it, how the heck do you process it? So after we dry all that nasty clay and we run it through this guy right here, we don't like running it through our gold cube because it gums it all up real fast. So you know what? Slim came up to me and said, hey, Chump, I got a better way to do it. He told me about his idea. It's called the Slim Sluice Bucket. I know, it don't make much sense, does it? So what do you need? Some jet dry, a drill, <laughs> yeah, with a paint stirrer on the end. So here, let me show you how this works. What I'm gonna do is to show you how effective this is. This little area right here, this is where my painted tub used to sit for a long time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig all the dirt up and then I'm gonna just put it right in the bucket. You can use this also for sampling, uh, but what I like to do is whenever we're running a lot of clays or if I just got done crushing up a whole lot of limonite that's got a lot of clay in it, things like that. I don't want to run it through all my machines like my gold cube and my sluice box, especially if it's a recirc unit. Why? Because that clay is going to gum up that water real quick and you're going to have to keep dumping and dumping and, and if you ain't careful that water will get thick like a slurry. And what will happen? That's right, the gold ain't gonna drop through it and just ride on the top of it, especially that fine gold. And you probably saw us doing it on our last gold mining adventure. It makes everything so much easier. So how does it work? You dump your stuff in the bucket, see that? I recommend a third, but no more than a half on your bucket, okay? Because if you get too much material in there, it's gonna get really hard to move it around that water and just turn into a paste. So remember, a third to a half, but no more than a half. Well, then you're gonna take some jet dry, Dump it in the bucket, just a little bit, not a lot. You're gonna get some water, you're gonna put it right in the bucket like such. Now the nice thing about this is that if you've got any weeds or organic material in there, see that, it's all coming to the top. And it doesn't clog up your pumps on your research systems. And that's fantastic because a lot of guys have issues with that. And what this is gonna do is not only break up your clay balls and get all that lighter material up and away, that's right, and it's gonna get all this out of the way. See that? And this is the stuff that's gonna clog up your pump 
on your research systems. So you want to get all that out, and that's the neat thing about this. But trust me, when you're all done with this, you'll be left with just the heavies on the bottom. And trust me, if there's gold in there, it's going to drop right to the bottom. <laughs> and yeah, you're going to get wet. And now you just dump out the water nice and slow. See that? Now wherever there's any gold, it's still in there. Look at that. All right, now, what did I just do? Well, I got rid of most of my organics that plugs up your screens, and I got rid of all the silts, and I got rid of all the clays. I've broken up all the clay. I got all the heavies, whatever gold, black sand, and of course the larger stones in there because I didn't classify. You can run this directly in through a gold cube as long as it's got the hopper on it. And like I said, we usually do this for when we're doing hard rock because it gets rid of 90% of all the stuff we don't want and it leaves all the gold and the heavies down in the bottom so that way we're not plugging up our system but if you're going to run it like this say you're sampling or you just want to see what you got what you do next is take gold pan make sure it's clean classifier is clean now see how I've, I've reduced everything down to practically nothing just the heavies in there and I got no organics which is fantastic And you just drain off the water, pan it out. Now, I don't know what's in here, because it was in my backyard, so I don't know if there's anything in it or not. We're about to find out. All right, give me some clean water. All right, let's see if we can see this together. All right, get the sun over here. All right, pan that out just a little bit. Let's see, we gotta get, see some heavies in there. Oh yeah, there's some really fine gold in there. I don't know if you can see that, there's a piece of lead. Look at that. Now, I know you can't see it, but I can. There's some really tiny, 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 tiny pieces of gold in there. Let me get rid of that water. And see if I can point to them for you. There's a little, little tiny piece right there. And looks like a piece of lead there. And there's a whole bunch of little finds right up in there. See that? Look at that. That's not bad. Now, this tells me two things, don't it? One, I must be a good panner because I didn't lose that much gold. And two, that Slim Seuss bucket really does work. And I think you should give it a shot. <laughs>